Hey everybody, Stan Efferding here, founder of The Vertical Diet. Wanted to make a quick video about when to donate blood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I get a lot of questions from clients and people DMing and emailing me about their blood work and they have some high red blood cell count, hemoglobin or hematocrit. Now I've been doing blood work for almost 30 years, I've had over 100 tests in the last 10 years, so I have quite a bit of experience with this, I'm going to tell you what I think. Now this panel that we run is the CBC, it's really common, it's complete blood count. I get mine with platelets, and I'll show you why in a second. But people often say they've got elevated hemoglobin and hematocrit, and their doctor tells them to donate blood. Well there's some considerations to be had. I've been to a general practitioner who has told me to donate blood, I take the same blood test to an endocrinologist, and they tell me not to worry about it. This was over 25 years ago. At the time I didn't know why, but since then there's been a lot of great research. Now, people who are on testosterone tend to have high red blood cell count. Those on injectable testosterone, about 67% can have high RBCs or hemoglobin or hematocrit. And those using the cream, about 13%. So let's take a closer look at this. Whether or not to donate blood may depend on whether or not you have erythrocytosis or polycythemia. Erythrocytosis is elevated red blood cells, hemoglobin or hematocrit, which is possibly due to testosterone use, as mentioned, or even people living in high altitudes, people with COPD, emphysema, and probably the reason that they put the Olympic Training Center in Denver. It's because it gives them high red blood cell counts in many cases. Sleep apnea can also cause high red blood cell count, hematocrit hemoglobin, which would be considered to be erythrocytosis. Now, if you also have high platelets and high ferritin, that can be a problem. That could be a good indicator that you've got polycythemia, which would be thick blood. And that can increase clotting, which can cause strokes and heart attacks. And high ferritin is high iron storage. That's hemochromatosis. That would be a good time to donate blood. But if you don't have those problems and you have low platelets and low ferritin, donating blood might cause you to have fatigue and weakness and anxiety. I made that mistake at one or two times in my career where I donated blood. It was due to a high ferritin level, so at the time it was a reasonable uh, suggestion, but I donated a second time to try and get my hemoglobin and hematocrit back into the normal range, and I ended up experiencing these symptoms here. That's why I never recommend my athletes donate blood within a month or maybe two months of a competition because it can give you fatigue, weakness, and anxiety. Uh, the red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body. It's not a good thing to donate blood before competition. So an increased red blood cell count may not equal thick blood. Could be erythrocytosis, might not be a good idea to donate. A lot of this great information comes from Dr. Rousier, Dr. Kamenarik, and they're both in the TOT Bible, the Testosterone Optimization Therapy Bible by Jay Campbell. So I include links to all of this in the vertical diet. Those of you who already have the 3.0 version, have access to these videos and this, these articles as well as the peer-reviewed published research. So it's over 250 pages with 200 of these references for a whole host of things that are important for your general health and performance, so check it out. 